Praise the Lord, my name is Jason Werner. I was criminally prosecuted by the state of Ohio in 2008. What is today, the 29th now of January 2013? You know, I issued the uh, two press releases back when this happened. Uh, and here I am now, what, almost five years later, and I've always had a desire to talk about this to really expose what happened, to um, bring it out there as much as possible. And uh, yeah, I've forgiven the city of Cleveland, the, the, the police officer, the people who made the reports, whatever else, you know, happened in the case. It, it just, you know, it was such a short time period that, you know, looking at it now, I think to myself, it's like, it, it, I could talk about it for hours. It's just, you know, so much. It was really quite dramatic what happened. And um, it's important that, you know, people really understand love here, okay? You know, the Bible says, love your enemies. Uh, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love your neighbor like you'd like to be loved yourself. I became a Christian in May of 2000. Yeah, you know, before I was a Christian, I loved people and, and I had the desire to give people their best interests. But I mean, you know, Christ said, I became a Christian, I have to learn learn that, you know, when you, when you love, you love your enemies. That night, what was it, uh, June of 2008, my friend and I were out preaching. We do this quite often. I must make it clear that I don't, no, people don't understand this, but um, I had been married for about a year and a half at that point, and that was the first time I had ever yelled at my wife. We were high. We were before I went out to go preach with my friend. My wife usually comes with me, you know, and I remember, um, I think we were like in our first trimester of our second child, you know. You know? So I went out and God was still blessed, all right? I was handcuffed. You know, I we go out to West Sixth, it's where all the clubs are and all the bars and dives and everything, right? I was part of that that clan. I, I would I would run with these people back when I was, you know, uh, a heathen and I, I would that's where I hung out, you know, and I not that area, but down the flats, you know, and the flats is pretty much gone now, but we have a heart for these people to deliver them from their addictions to cocaine. I didn't get involved in any drugs back when I was a heathen, but I know a lot about that. Marijuana, smoking cigarettes, you know, you name it. I mean, fornication, people are going out there cheating on their husbands or wives, whatever the case might be. They're getting drunk. A lot of, obviously, you know, I'm drinking all over the place down there. Oh, boy. People are hurt. So we're reaching out to people. One-on-one, -on -one, just like, you know, like, like, like this right now, okay? And you know, people overhear our conversations, obviously, will, hey, Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. Any form of birth control is sin. We know it'll prick people's hearts, yes. Homosexuality is sin. We say these things. We know it'll prick people's hearts, and it could cause somebody to go to family and children's services, or they'll go to, you know, the police, because they know they have to act. And we, now at this point, we're working with the police quite regularly in our ministry and we work with a lot of departments to communicate with various municipalities to let them know what we're doing. Obviously we, we, we do issues with permits too, but that's separate. You don't need a, you don't need a permit. And that's one of the things that people kept saying. We well, need a permit to go preach the gospel. You don't need a permit. It's, it is truly freedom of speech kind of deal. And it's covered right there in the Constitution. <sighs> Patrolman Rudin, Martin Rudin, he needed love. His officer, uh, his, 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 uh, the officer that worked with him, Sphia, I don't know his first name, uh, he just kind of went along with what Patrolman Rudin was doing. I could tell he didn't like it. But it's important that you, you see here what happened, you know. Um, <sighs> evidently, people didn't like what we were doing. They were making these accusations, I guess, that they could hear us through the windows of this restaurant. And manager, you know, said some things to me and says, I'm going to call the police. Which we get that often, you know, people do get offended and, you know, 
We should expect that as Christians. So uh, the police came. They were there in like within less than five minutes after he said he was calling the police, and which is really sad considering Cleveland State, because of the fact that you know we have so many crimes in Cleveland, all the grand theft of the cars that are all the time, and the rapes and the murders. Here's a guy preaching the gospel, and somebody's offended. It wasn't a hate crime or anything. They're there, you know. The officers stood watching us for a few minutes, you know. Um, he eventually said we should just go, you know, across the street. Which, the argument was, well, look, we go across the street, people are eating outside, they don't have a problem with us talking to people. And, you know, every now and then we do raise our voices and we see a crowd of people coming along. We'll say something. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And, um, you know, people are eating outside. I'm like, Already we've got conflict. But I think the whole thing is, it, it, right from the very beginning, it was, it was already set up. Uh, he, I think he already had his mind set up to put the handcuffs on me and all that. In my life, you know, preaching the gospel since you know, May of 2000, on the streets, all kinds of places, never been punched, never had a gun pulled on me. Oh, actually, um, there was a time in, uh, after that, because it got involved, and I, I was punched too, but that was after. Um, this is, this is June of 2008, never had any problems with the police, and we've worked with the police many times. People would call the police on us, you know, and, and, and next thing you know, oh, whatever, you're just talking to people about Jesus, I don't see any problems here. And they, they, they see the people just being irrational. Patrolman Martin Rudin, he needed love, he needed love, and so badly, so badly to the point whereby, you know, eventually he, he, um, he handcuffed me and you know, I remember too, you know, he pushed me up against the, um, uh, the, the patrol car, you know, and, and um, put the handcuffs on me and, and he said to me, I am more religious than you, which that's, you know, I'm glad that he said that. He became my enemy just by the fact that he was messing around with one of God's anointed and people kept telling me, Jason, don't talk about this, just be quiet. That's the thing. People don't want you to communicate. They don't want you to bring things out. They like the things that be in the darkness and just hide, hide, hide. Don't deal with the problem. I'm, I'm dealing with this, and I'm, I'm telling you right now. What he did was definitely improper. It may have been a crime. I ended up going into the back seat. He helped me get in there. Well, I was just getting in there because I've never been in the you know, back seat of a cruiser before like that. And, and you know, it's like... You have that front, you know, big, well, you, you know, well, I don't know how many of you actually know, I mean, you know, this big window, okay, for the, you know, the front seat where the officers sit, and then, of course, the back seat is, is right there, and it's like, you don't have a whole lot of room just to get in because your, your feet are right up against it, your legs feet are right up against it, this big, huge, like, wall, and then the, you know, window and everything. So I had to call the game, he kind of, you know, threw me in there, which was kind of helpful, you know. Patrolman room went out. And uh, talk to some witnesses. You know, there were a bunch of people. Well, there's got the lights on and everything, right? And you've got, um, you know, a guy with handcuffs on. You know, and I'm like, wow, man. So I'm just, you know, smiling at everybody. Just you're smiling, you know. And just, I didn't do anything, guys. Don't worry. You know, <laughs> usually it's like, you know, the guy might have like uh, an ounce or <laughs> a kilo of cocaine. Maybe it's, you know, they call the guy dealing drugs. No, they call this guy preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know. The, the, on the actual um, ticket, the uh, citation, it says that I was, it was, it was like a, not a misdemeanor, okay? It said that uh, I was blocking the way of patchers by, I'll explain all that in a second, and then um, calling people baby killers and telling people they're going to hell. Blocking the way of patchers by, we ended up going back and we got pictures and everything of the area and it was 81 square feet, the little curved, curved curb, you know what I'm saying? that exact corner where we were, we usually move around quite a bit, you know. At that point where the officers were watching us, we were, we noticed that they were watching us and we, you know, basically stayed in that one little spot there and had one-on-one -on -one conversation with people and then of course the police kind of break stuff up and everything. Officer was out. Martin Rudin, it's, it's important that all police 
watch this video and, and understand what happens. This is, this is very, very bad, okay? You know, we work with people who are in prisons. Most of these people, like 95% of them easily are guilty, okay? Every now and then you work with somebody who's innocent, okay? Uh, Cincinnati Innocence Project, for example. You know, they come across these things, and it's, it's just, in this case right here, this officer went out, and he was looking to put together a case against me, and he knew what he needed. Blocking the way of Patrick's buyers, there's case law on that. And they can make an argument for that. Well, he got the, um, uh, talked to a few, I guess there became three witnesses or whatever, and, and it never became of anything in, in, in any kind of trial or anything. But um, the, the area was quite, I'm like, what, two and a half at the very most, two, two feet maybe here, you know, it's like, and my friend, of course, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't arrest him or um, charge him with anything. He just, he just took off. <laughs> he got on a bus and took off. But like five bucks for the bus, he told me, that's a crime right there, you know. So that was the issue with the black, you know, and then the other issue was calling people baby killers. There's nothing illegal about calling people baby killers. And I wouldn't be surprised if I, at least if you're being honest, you know, if you, if you kill a child in the womb, you are killing that child. It's, it's, it's premeditated murder, even though our state said it's, it's legal to kill a child in the womb. And then the issue with regard to the telling people to go into hell, come on, I mean, we're, the whole reason we're out there is to prevent people from going to hell. I give them the truth. And I'm giving you the truth right now about Jesus Christ, you know? And, uh, yeah, it's really you know sad that these things had to come up like this, and it's, you know, we don't tell people to go to hell. You will go to hell if you don't surrender to Jesus Christ. And Jesus is not coercing you. There's no weapons involved, no threats or anything like that. So uh, these were the accusations, and um, well, anyway, they ended up dropping the charges. But the thing is. I was in the back seat. I remember, you know, Rudin, Martin Rudin telling me, "I'm more religious than you, and I, 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 I loved him right back." And that's what we got to do as Christians. This is an enemy, and God's supposed to have your back. The devil has got no defense for your love. You know that. And you love him. Jesus does not. He's not interested in your love for religion, okay? He's interested in the love for Him, His name, His word. Jesus did not call you to be religious. That's what I said to Him. Jesus is not interested in you, you know, you being religious. Anyway, I was in the back seat. He was out. He came back in. He was in, he was in the driver's side, okay? This is where the problem is. He comes in. He's laughing about this. Here we go. You know, any kind of crime should be considered a cr serious crime. If it's a felony or something like this, it's a misdemeanor. The charge was disorderly conduct. I understand disorderly conduct, you know. You got a guy preaching the gospel in downtown Cleveland that considered that's considered disorderly be considering the state of our country today and how, you know, little we hear the gospel of Jesus Christ being preached, even in the churches. So here's the, this is this is what I'm, I'm highlighting right now, okay? He was laughing, bragging to his colleague, uh, Officer Sphia, he's got this notebook out, he says, I got, I got three witnesses that he was, what I just told you, the, 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 you know, the citation and everything. We don't laugh about this. Okay. There are people who are in prison right now, wrongfully. Because of evidence that was planted. For example, Kevin Keith. Been working with him. He's on death. Well, he was on death row. He's on death row. We met him, and he, he's now, well, he's given life without parole. But there's evidence that was. You just gotta put it on somebody, and they, you know, that's a guy. They go, they go with it. Yeah, okay. Uh, obviously, Sean Hawkins, another case. You know, he was on death row, now given life without parole. This has happened in the last few years. All right. There's some people who are in prison. You know, with other issues. And they didn't have any, any part, they got the wrong guy, or whatever the case might be, and they just, they go after the person who's got, like, no money, and, you know, they just can't defend themselves, stuff like that. In my case, I was represented by, well, a few different law firms helped me out, but, I mean, out of Florida, they flew up, Christian Law Association, pro bono, 
case was dismissed the day before trial, but it was like, you know, verbally dismissed, kind of we had to show up kind of thing, you know, and we showed up and um, 